I am unashamed. What about you? It's on the right hand side. Let's hear it <laughs> it's on the right hand side of the Bible. It's Welcome to our podcast. We, we're we're midstream trying to find a it's verse. It's where John was in prison and he's doubting uh, whether Jesus is really who he is. And they send word to Jesus. Is it not Matthew 11? Where it's Matthew. Look at here. Matthew 11, 11. Look, you were right. It is on the right hand of the page yeah. at the top of the column. Let's see it. Can I read this? <laughs> yeah. I tell you the truth, Matthew 11, 11. Among those born of women... There has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, which is quite the statement. But then he makes this statement. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Hmm. That's pretty good. So we're in John chapter 1, and we're talking about John the Baptist preparing the way for Jesus. You know what's interesting about that Matthew text, though, Jace, about John the Baptist is that John, you know, he had been arrested because he had run afoul of he had run afoul of the uh, the you know king and all this. You know, he's basically calling them out for you know living with one another, living sinfully. Well, I think what happened so was, he was the, he was a the king married like his brother's wife. Correct. And where's that passage at? And, and so she gets a burn in her saddle about it. And so then they were at a party. And he's, one of the daughters. Ar- he gets arrested. Yeah, John the Baptist gets arrested. One of the daughters of one of that family group comes out there and dances, I guess, suggestively. <laughs> and he basically says, I'll give you anything you want. He was so impressed with the dance. And she said, I'll tell you what, I'll take the head of John the Baptist. But your mom had put her up on to a it. platter. And they didn't want to do it because John was a very popular figure. Obviously, he was the forerunner for Jesus. So it was like, I mean, he's look. you can imagine this king because he's like, oh, my goodness, what have you got me into? But once he said that, a royal decree, it has to happen. But here's my point. What's interesting is when you read that passage you read in Matthew 11, whenever John is there, like John the Baptist is like the boldest, you know, one of the boldest people that's ever lived. But yeah. he's having a moment. Like he's like he's sitting in jail and he's starting to wonder, you know, are we sure this is it? And what I love about that is if John the Baptist can have doubts, then that that clears me for the times I wonder and aren't as strong as I need to be. Because you're not find a guy stronger than him. So he well, sends his disciples to Jesus mm-hmm. in that Matthew passage and says, Now, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure about that? Like we're good to go, right? Because he's thinking in the jail cell, they're fixing to cut my head off or something bad fits out to me. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. And then that's when Jesus talks about John the Baptist. But isn't that amazing that a man that bold that had a clarity of his whole life and what he was supposed to do from day one, Nazarite vow, never cut his hair, never drank a drop of alcohol. I mean, he went through all this. I mean, he was the, he was the uh, top, he's a ninja of, of his era but in terms gotta, of spirit. you got to remember, uh, he came unto his own, John chapter 1, but his own, but they, they rejected him. Uh, it was there. you got to remember, it's a 400-year quite where God didn't say a word from Malachi to John. So... Or say it say it this way from Malachi to Jesus, four hundred years God was silent. But the last thing He said through the prophet Malachi, "See, I send you the prophet Elijah, before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes." Great for the ones who believed Him that Jesus was who He said He was, and dreadful for the ones who are not going to believe in Him. So you got a prophecy. Malachi said, I'm going to send you Elijah, and he'll turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, or else I'll come and strike the lamb with a curse. Basically, here comes Jesus. Well, Luke records John 
a son of Zechariah and Elizabeth. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. He's touting John the Baptist, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He's never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he'll be filled with the Holy Spirit from birth. Many of the people of Israel will be, will he bring back to the Lord their God? Well, it sounds like Malachi. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah. Well, he just told you Zechariah and Elizabeth are going to have a son, and whoever he is, he's going to go in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. We'll be back to Malachi again. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So when John the Baptist comes on the scene, he is the Elijah of Malachi. He's saying Elijah's going to come. And they're like, Elijah? What? Well, they looked up and they said, who in the world is that thing coming out of the desert you know, robbing beehives and chasing down grasshoppers to, to make it. So they couldn't get, they couldn't get him on food laws because I mean he was his diet was uh was out kind of way out there. But you just well, think locusts about locusts and honey. I've always thought that he had you know when you see that locust and honey as an outdoors person, I thought okay, I get it because he the only way you can eat a locust and I tried it because it was biblical. Yeah. And I thought the only way you can make that work is to dip it in some honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was he was he was he crunchy? The, the, was oh, it one of them big horrible. old Yeah, one of them big uh, what do you call them? Yeah, like the I forgot what they're I mean, official, I looked at it and I thought is, but... I I should not eat this. So, uh Jace, you know, you and I use the search engine social media uh, not necessarily because we lo- love it, but I mean, just because we have to. I don't know if I use it. I'm familiar with it, and I I'm an occasional user. Right. I can always tell when it's you, you know, and because we have people that help us with stuff like that. But I can always tell when it's actually coming from old Jace. You know, use it personal. But here's the here's yeah. the here's the problem, and Dad, you wouldn't know this as you're studying your Bible there, um, that people can they hijack your information. Or you know, in your 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 ability to go on, they hijack it and then they use it and sell it. I mean, it's a it's a it's a big problem, you know, because it's it's yeah. it's your how you're communicating to people, but the people that run these tech elites, you know, you hear about them. I know you see them on you know Fox News or whatever. You hear you know talking about uh, talking about stealing people's information or donate money to these left wing causes. All that's for real. Or your identity. See, yeah. somebody could steal your identity if you had one on the internet. <laughs> You're safe, but for the rest of the world, this is an issue. I'm trying to wrap my head around what you're saying. Just, just soak it I don't in. Mind just they, let it, let it breathe. They steal my information. Here, put your mic up there, <laughs> Phil. You're, you're like this yeah. is a. My, I don't well, mind if they steal my information. <laughs> just tell somebody else what you stole from me. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm zoned in on Jesus, him crucified and raised from the okay. dead. So how would they use that against me? <laughs> well, Just, yes. Al, tell us right, about so, so let me tell you about ExpressVPN because what they've done is they've come up with a way for everybody but Phil uh, to protect your identity, to make sure you're, you know, that none of your, your search history, your encrypting, it's all covered. It's all protected. Uh, cause protected we, from what? From well, from people that want to steal that information and sell it to others or, you know, who knows what all they do. Uh, you it. have to have. You mentioned steal okay. your identity. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm 73 years old, this over is, the hill. This is not working. Bible no. bumper. Why would anybody want to say, yeah, let's steal that? I, That's just what they do. But look, just <laughs> it's like when you were a little kid and somebody, you didn't want them stealing your BB gun. Well, now the Internet is like the new cool BB gun, sort of. There you go. You see? So they're stealing. <laughs> Just tell us what we can do to help this out. I mean, this is priceless. So so Dad's not getting it. But most of you out there, because you're watching this in computer land, as Dad calls it, you understand that you need to have your identity protected. So ExpressVPN, that's the name of this company, ExpressVPN.com slash unleashed. 
Because see, we don't want to we don't want to have our identity unleashed. So that's what that's going to be our call word. ExpressVPN.com slash unleashed. You get three months uh, free uh, with a one year package. So if you you sign on with these guys for a year, they get the first three months free because you're watching our podcast and yeah. you use unleashed. But I'm in but this was a rare person because there was never anyone like him except Elijah, and here he comes, and Luke recorded that. Then you go on to say, you know, the greatest man who ever come out of a woman. So, I mean, he was quite the character John the Baptist was. But he did make the point, he who's least in the kingdom is greater than him. And why do you think he said that? I mean, Jesus well, said it. And look. I mean, what, what, how would you apply? Because that, that does seem like a hard concept to understand he was before it came and when it came it was far greater than anyone ever right. it, you could have included anyone you say before the kingdom came there was no grace there was no mercy there was no holy spirit available yeah for i think all that was people. his point too. Yeah, that, that and, was his point and the things that make and from a human perspective the things that make men great from a kingdom perspective, are not the same thing at all. Oh, that's right. So that's part of what he said. Anything too. before grace, you say, it would be greater for you to be under grace and have God's spirit, your sins wiped away, you're delivered from Satan, from guilt, yeah. from law, and yeah. from the grave. That's that. That makes you that makes you greater than I've John the Baptist. I always thought the perfect picture of that was the one. I think it's in Matthew 19 when the rich young ruler comes along and you know everybody's looking at him and like oh this guy you could and even jesus says oh yeah and he says you keep the law i've kept him since i was a boy you know and so the disciples are like man look at this guy but he didn't have the heart for it. i mean to everybody looking he was the greatest but then when jesus questioned him about giving some of his cash he walks away sad a lot of people I mean, that tells you right there i mean and look the, then you look at luke 19 at, at zacchaeus little tax collecting you know guy vermin. that everybody hated vermin yeah, and yet he's like i'm coming to your house today and then he said without being prompted by jesus he said you know what i've cheated i have cheated a lot of people and i'm going to give them four times back what i stole from them. and plus, that's the difference in the heart so i'm saying it, it blows a hole in the argument for the people who would say well you know that was just real unkind of god to allow this guy who had the greatness and power of Elijah, the forerunner of Jesus Christ, appointed to pave the way for the Savior of the, for the Savior of the world, and he had to die this horrible death. Well, why, why would God do such a thing? What they forget is, with God, the resurrection. I mean, it's like they all were martyred, including John the Baptist. Right. You know, all the apostles, but John, every last one of them died horrible deaths, you know, one after the other, the apostle Paul and, and Peter and all of them. Right. You say they all died for the cause, but they really didn't die. Peter said, I'm fixing to leave here, set my tent aside in Second Peter 1, and he said, and after my departure, I want y'all to remember what I'm saying here. I mean, he was looking at physical death. Right. The same thing for John the Baptist and all the rest of them that died for the cause. Right. We talked about they it. live on. We talked about four because we kind of came into the middle of the story here about John the Baptist. But if you go back to when Jesus was born, and in fact when Mary was pregnant with Jesus, she goes to visit her relative, who happened to be John the Baptist's mother. Mm -hmm. And you remember because she walked in, and and so she said she looks at uh, Mary and she says. The baby in my womb just leapt for joy when you walked up. She took that as a sign that John the Baptist, who she was carrying in her womb, who was a little bit older, he he's like already fired up about what's going on. So this is yeah. all happening like before they're even born. Think about a group of people that were all going to be liars. They're all going to tell a big lie. And they write down what we are discussing play by play, and you're like, now wait just a minute. So so a bunch of people just got together and you could add the five thousand years going back to you know Genesis two fourteen or whatever it is where it's pr the predictions made someone from a woman, the seed of a woman will destroy Satan. 
Well, now he comes, and the forerunner is right before him, John the Baptist, and his life is being told, like the baby leaping, you're like, so they all just systematically and methodically dream this tale up? <laughs> I mean, ow. It's and just, the guy looks like a bum. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no offense, he probably looked a lot like he's you. The, he's, he's paving the way for the Savior of the world, and you look at him coming, and he's screaming at the top of his lungs, repent. And, it's, you know, and he, he's real nice to his neighbors, as in you brood of vipers. Who told you of the coming wrath? Well, I've yeah. always, I've always I mean, said when you I – a bunch of snakes. To when I go out and woo. speak, I always like when I'm talking about John the Baptist, I found a picture – Obviously, there's no picture of John the Baptist, but where somebody like 600 years ago painted what they thought he might look like based on the description you just talked about. So I put it up there. Well, it looks a lot like, you know, Phil. Now, this was done oh, yeah. 600 years ago. I feel time. better about it after reading about him, what he looked like and all. I feel better about myself, if you understand yeah. what I'm well, saying. Well, I've always said, Phil, you're like a cardboard sign and a coffee cup away from just being a guy on the street saying, well. repent. You know, I, I, I love my neighbor this. enough, and I know John did too. But I, I I pull up a little short. I'm pretty blunt, but I pull up a little short, and I don't call my neighbor "you brood of vipers." Yeah, you bunch of snakes. I I pull up short of that. I'm like, well, but it did cross your mind on occasion, many times. <laughs> All right. So today, uh, our theme seems to be on our podcast is protection. Uh, one of our favorite groups is the Simply Safe Home Security because I don't know if you know this, Dad, but a lot of people are get their homes burglarized on a regular basis. Really, really, it's the number one number one crime that's out there. Not around here, but probably less here. But you know, you get in these neighborhoods, people walking around, they don't see a camera, and all of a sudden, you know, they just go. You know, during the Christmas season, I was reading that. They're stealing the packages because everybody orders so much stuff, you know. So you you don't have a way to keep an eye on what's going on. Most people now, the most powerful deterrent for burglary are cameras. See, in your world, Phil, it's dogs, guns, people that look like you. Because you couldn't access the camera. You have cameras, but you you put, do you even know how to look at them? No. They would they no. would find out who who it is. They, there's no way to get here without them being filmed to get to where I am right, right. now. I knew that you had it. It'll be on film, but you know, before it gets on film, you hope it turns out well if burglary is involved. You, you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So here's the deal, and this is another fact I didn't know. Police dispatch up to 350% faster uh, than a nor- normal burglar alarm if you use this simply safety. In other words, if the alert goes out. So obviously they trust in it. They know you're going to have cameras there. It's a good idea. Entry, motion, you know, there's all these things you put on your door. It's a great deal. Uh, basically it's only going to cost you if you sign up with these guys 50 cents a day. That's well worth it. No contracts, which I like that. Uh, so if you go to simplysafe.com slash unashamed, simplysafe.com slash unashamed you're going to get free shipping on your order plus a 60 day money back guarantee pretty good so you don't like it 60 days you get your money back simplysave.com slash unashamed protect your valuables and your home i just well, I was read a, i was a viper <laughs> myself at one time I just think that would be dad should do that sometimes just do the sign that says i don't want any money like go stand at sam's yeah. where there's guys always there i don't want any money but here's what here's what you need and just you know, do the gospel symbols or something. Just, you know, like that. Yeah, because, I mean, you would fit right in. Well, they would way. look and say, oh, look at that poor man. They said, wait a minute, what? if they read your sign. Yesterday, I looked up yesterday, uh, and I think it's worth telling, and I looked, and three different women had brought their either the person they were dating or their husband. One of them was a couple. They were married. The couple with them, I don't think they were married. The other ones weren't married. But the girls, the, the, the women, somehow talked their men into coming to Louisiana to yours truly seated right here. And they were from Indiana. And uh, where were the other ones from? They were from a different state, uh, maybe Kentucky. But they all came 
And when they came, they sat down and they said, we have some visitors want to talk to you, Phil. And I walked over there and I met them, you know, how y'all doing? Pretty good. So what's up? And they said, well, we, we've come down here and, and, and the, the guy I'm dating or one of them said, my husband have decided to make Jesus Lord of his life today. So we came down here and that's why we're here. Well, five minutes later, someone came by and they said, uh, that girl that brought that guy with her that wants to give his life to the Lord today? I said, yeah. She said, she wants to sing a solo. And I said, oh I said, well, get her up back. Oh, Phil, <laughs> you're the only man I know that your first response would be, well, sure. <laughs> yeah, I said. <laughs> Have you ever seen wants, this? I said, she wants to sing a solo. I said, well, give her a mic and get her, get her going. Have you ever seen the they show? They said, well, I'm... when do you want to do this? I said, right now. <laughs> So she gets mm. up. I said, I wave we, at her. I said, come on over. Can we not discuss that? Have you ever seen the show American Idol? Have you ever no, seen that show? No, I never. No, I missed that People one. People get up and they try out for singing. Well, most of them are terrible. Well, here's the rest of the story. The girl gets okay. up and somebody hands her a mic. And I wave at everybody like the, the, we got a big crowd, you know. So I wave my hands like that, like, hey, shut her down. We got something going on here. So the girl gets up and gets on the mic. So everybody, Was it good? everybody is waiting. And when she started singing, I'm like, I looked at her. I said, where in the world did this woman come from? Good or bad? Oh, terrific. Oh. I mean. <laughs> I was on the edge of my seat. I was, oh, no. there. I was like. What are you talking about? Screech she or... started singing and you could have heard a pin drop. And what was I'm, she singing? Do you remember the she song? Was, she was singing a song. You know, I don't listen to like the radio singing much, but so, <laughs> but Miss Kay said that's a, radio that's, a that, that's a popular song. <laughs> was it a spiritual song? I've it's never a heard very it, spiritual I've song. I've never heard it called radio. I think the singing. name of the name of the song was "I'm a I'm a child of God." But she was saying, "I'm a child oh, no of God." No longer slaves. I, no longer. No, yeah, that, that's it. That's it. I am a child. Of God. I'm that's a, a child. Great song. You know, I met so the anyway, people who wrote that So anyway, she sang that thing, that and I mean, there was an eruption that came out of the brothers and sisters there when she got done with that, and that's the way we kicked off our little Sunday morning really? service. Really? Wow. There. Well, that might. And have I been. got up and 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 preached the gospel to all concerned. I I didn't remember their names. They told me, but I forgot them. So I'm up there. And I and so I call that group Indiana, and I look over here, and I call that group. I said Kentucky, don't forget this. Indiana, always remember. I was Shocker. just given the states by states. Yeah, but anyway, they came up. They all confessed Jesus as Lord, and I baptized them. And on top of the song that the girl and the girls, the entire time, the entire time we were there for a couple of hours, tears just came out of their eyes. Just. I think that was a God Tears. orchestrated meeting. That's awesome. If that wasn't a God thing, I will eat my hat. Well, well was, it was. I mean, it look, was great. Have to, I have to tell you something that's incredible. You're not going to believe this. By the way, somebody, you know, these days, somebody put the thing and it went on, went on with the internet. I mean, they were telling me about it. It's out there somewhere. It's out there. So there was radio singing in right, computer I have, land. I have to tell you this because I think this is a God thing. I got all excited one time I was, not recently, I'd say within the last couple of years. So I was speaking at White's Fair Road at, at our church. Yep. And I did a lesson about that we're the children of God. Well, I came across this song, same song that she sang. Really? Yes. And I thought, man, this song is awesome. And I was like you. I didn't listen to radio music. It's the first time. <laughs> Radio of, singing. So I went in there and told Missy. Most people call it music, though. Yeah, right? that goes on radio. The singing. next morning, I told Missy, I was like, "You're not gonna believe it. I heard this song. I'm no longer a slave. I'm a child of God." She's yeah. like, "Yeah, it's it's you know, yeah." It's, I was it's, like, "Oh, you've heard that?" She's like, "Yeah, everybody who's a believer has heard that song." <laughs> I said, well, "You're not gonna believe what I did." I said, "I got so excited because it fit in with my lesson." Uh -huh. So I sent them an email, the people who wrote the song, and she's rolling around. She's like. I mean, you sent them an email. I said two o'clock in the morning. I said, "Look, I just want you all to know this song is awesome." And I said, "I'm, you know, I I kind of played the Duck Dynasty card. I was like, I don't know if you ever heard of our show." And she's like, "Well, they're not going to believe you." I said, "No, I I sent a picture that has not been circulated on the internet. I was like, this is me." I'm Jace. This is my family. I say you were. Is in there. there a picture of you that hasn't been circulated on the internet? Where would you Good find point, a picture? But like I, that? Well, I took it out of my phone and put it on there. 
So yeah. she's like, what was your point? I was like, because I just felt a connection with the words of that song and what I was sharing. I didn't go to the song. I, I heard the song after I got the lesson. I was like, perfect. I said, who knows? Maybe we're, you know, doing this the same thing. This girl was singing about, and I wasn't, I, I'd never heard the song, but she was singing about her husband being born again. Yeah. And she was the, the, the precursor to that. Yeah. And I was Perfect. just sitting there listening on how this was unfolding. And I was saying while I was up there, I said, I'm guessing. I said, let's see, Indiana, y'all are here from Indiana. I said, Indiana, I'm just guessing here. But I would say that you've been mean to your woman. You've been up to no good because you've been a child of Satan. Playing the this role is, of John the Baptist. This is John the Baptist. I said, probably that's, come that's old, hugging, drunk. You and realize, I said, You've been John doing, the Baptist. Look, John I was the Baptist. got his head cut off. <laughs> yeah, and I looked over there at the table when I was speaking and saying, I'm just guessing this is what you've been up to. And she was going, <laughs> and he was sitting there going, you just need to be more blunt. So look, let me finish my story. So a couple Confess weeks later, your sins and repent. So look, a couple weeks later, I, they email me back. The Helsers, Jonathan and Melissa. That's who wrote that song and performed it. And he's like, "You're not going to believe this," but he said, "I dream." Who wrote the song? The Helsers. Helsers. It's like H E L S E R. Husband and wife team. Husband, Husband and wife. Team. Well, awesome. you know. Singers. So look, thank said, you two for writing that song. Look, right. so he said, "I had a dream." that I was in your family one time because I sent them the email and said, good job. Whoa. And I was like, well, this is getting weird. Cause then this Missy, is going on at two in the morning. Yeah, I, well, <laughs> no, the two weeks late, they oh, were doing two. a tour in Europe. So they, it took them a couple weeks before they answered the email. So I go in there and tell Missy, I'm like, they answered my email. Duh. Cause she said, that'll never work. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. I was like, and he had a dream that he was in our family one time. Ooh. And she said, okay, they're weirdos. So, look, anyway. <laughs> and his we, song is being sung at the at the, yeah. at the deal. I'm like. Oh, there's more. Oh, I'm there's getting, more. There's more. Man, he hadn't heard the whole so song. So then he's like. Next. See, this information is coming at me fast. <laughs> and everybody said, Reagan God's still working today. I said, uh, oh, it yeah. it's better. So, look, a few weeks later, he's like, hey, we're doing a show in Shreveport, Louisiana. Well, let's hook up. So they we went over to the concert. They, they got in my vehicle. So you've met these people. They stayed in my house for three days. Cause the, yes. <laughs> hey, awesome. I mean, just warriors, spirit-filled warriors for the kingdom. And you can tell so. both of them the song lives on in, in, in real time. You yep. can tell them if they happen to miss that yesterday. They said it's on the internet. They might you know, they may find it. Look, I'll send him a text send him a text. right now. Send him a text. I'll tell you this: they got <laughs> another one out. Land, that's what I'd we text did. him, but I don't have anything to text with. Yeah, in computer Look, land, that's they've the way got we... another one out now. It's called "Raise a Hallelujah," and it's awesome. Oh, yeah, Do yourself a favor and get somebody that works for you to pull. We that asked up. that girl to come back. Yeah. Miss Kay, she got involved. She was out there, you know, she's squalling too. So everybody begins to cry, but she goes over to them, you know. I prayed for them before they left that God would protect them from the evil one and that he would start showing signs of love, joy, peace, peace. I said, keep reminding him of that now. Remind him. So just so to let our audience. It was a great service. Just to let our audience know so you'll kind of understand our setup here. So Jace and I, Weiss Ferry Rose, our church, we've been there you know, 40 years, that's where dad came when he became a Christian. That's where we came as a family. I preached there a long time. Now I've started preaching again. Jason and Missy do worship. But that's kind of our the mother church of our region. But we did a church plant across the river, and it's called WFRU, which is because it's next to the university. And so mom and dad have been working over there for about two years. So when we're describing these services, that's what he's talking about. But mom and dad's deal is really fluid and open just like i said it's just they shift on a dime they kind of laid back very laid back it's it's by the way it's about what'd you say dad 60 40 african-americans there's more yeah. more african-americans than, yeah. than white people which is there, really good which is great and and that area is an african-american neighborhood around the university so mm -hmm. that's been part of their goal is to do it. in fact today mom is speaking they got a big martin luther king uh, deal there today at the church and mom is the speaker did you know martin that? luther king that. would be thrilled to see blacks and whites together because we, right. we're still in this rut about black churches and white churches i'm like wait a minute here what about we just all come together 
So did and we eat together and worship together, black and the white only, or who anybody else? The only else? color I'm concerned with is the red blood of Jesus that brings all people under the same cross. That's well right. said. So we got a, a product <clears throat> that uh, we've been talking about on the podcast that I think is one of the best things um, out there uh, and so needed. Uh, Dad, this doesn't apply to your world, but for the rest of us in computer land that have kids or grandkids, in my case, your great grandkids. So kids figure out quickly, uh, usually through the internet, how to get into troubling things because there's a lot of trouble, obviously, on the internet. You're talking about these apps, and we've talked about Snapchat Just and all these immaturity. Yeah. They're not mature enough. They're not mature enough. Make- and, and you got, and you have adults you know, people out there praying as well. So you, you put that together, you got some disastrous things. And there's that go other on. adults that are busy on their phone. So busy. They're not paying attention right. what their kids are doing on theirs. That's right. So, uh, there's, there's some folks that have started to have a, a product called circle. Uh, so it's got the idea is that we're going to draw a circle sort of around your family and they've come up with a way to be able to manage and filter, you know, how much time your kids can be on the internet, when they can be on the internet. I mean, there's a lot of great features uh, about the, it's called Circle Home Plus. And so uh, I was just in uh, up in North Carolina, and they were putting Circle on Zach, our cousin, on his all of his stuff. And it was so funny because while Ben's do going through the process, you know, he said, "I want watch, watch and see what's fixing to happen," and like. Two minutes later, they all come running in. I was like, I can't get I – mean, what happened? I lost my you – know, I mean, everybody's mm-hmm. like immediately it was a, something that's happened there, and it was like, calm down, and here's what we're doing. And then Zach explained to his kids what they were putting on. So love they were is, just doing this. It's like the song, Love is Like a Circle. That's Remember? exactly right. Love. It is. You heard that song? Mm-hmm. No, I haven't. I don't listen to radio singing. This is like a kid song. Love is like a circle, a circle big and round. I oh, no. missed, missed that one. <laughs> okay. well, that's a good one. They should use that song for like their uh, well, there you go. tagline. If, if anybody from Circle is watching, Chase just gave you a, a jingle. You're uh, you're welcome. So anything, anyway, this is a great thing to do uh, for your family, protect them. And look, Chase is right. I know people get busy, but if you're not paying attention, trust me, somebody else is moving in to do something bad. You've got to break this cycle where everybody goes to their own room on their own device and lives right for so y'all are saying days. to me but to be so bold as just shut it down never start it to begin with it's a little, little rough little well much. it's probably not going to happen look, and uh I've, look, I've, you're, you, you know, I've been there with my kids they go through those stages you know that's I'm a, like, it becomes a takeaway but this is a way yeah. to basically control the atmosphere so look so yeah. for our listeners you get a limited time offer here so you want to move on this if you don't already have circle home plus you get thirty dollars off when you visit meetcircle.com slash unashamed. Got to use our code unashamed. This one will get you 30 bucks off. If you visit meetcircle.com slash unashamed when you get to your checkout, uh, save you some money, but more, way more importantly, uh, you're going to be able to protect your family because you need this. Trust me. I got the same thing with my grandkids. Jason has it with his kids, so you, you got to do it. It's called setting boundaries. That's right. For so, a nominal fee. For a nominal fee. Meetcircle.com uh, slash unashamed. Save you some money. Protect your family. Oh, well, right. First Corinthians 12 says that. There's no male We have to get past or, this black church so, and white church I, thing. I hope somebody yeah. records this day because I'm really curious. Mom's been studying all week, and I've been real proud of her. So Zach and I have been coasting her on a few things about MLK. And one of the things that we talked to her about, this, the letter from the Birmingham jail is a powerful it's sure is. that he wrote dad actually dad did a movie called torchbearer by the way i think you find it amazon prime you need to go check it out because it's really good i, so, I will amen that it's it, all it's it was awesome well movie. done so <clears throat> dad we filmed a scene in birmingham in the jail cell because they've taken that jail cell and they put the it same in, cell he was in that's right they put it in a museum uh, that's right across the street from the church that got bombed there so dad is in that jail cell reading that letter and i mean like i just got a chill because like we were there and we were doing it i mean it it made you chill didn't it dad just the whole deal i said to the brothers yesterday and i looked at the (laughs) african-americans there i said we ought to have our tail kicked i said for the way we treated you folks for all those years i said we ought to be horsewhipped for that i said it was pathetic 
I said, I wasn't there. I said, but the way they treated y'all, I'm astounded that y'all have come together right. after after the way you were treated. Right. I said, so I, I, you're to be commended for being forgiving. I said, just remember this. I said, you just forgive them and move on is about all you can do. You have to I move said, forward at some yep, point. Somebody sent forward. me a quote yesterday, I guess in anticipation of Martin Luther King Day. It was just somebody emailed it to me, but it was awesome. And it was a quote, and it basically said it was pretty long, so I can't remember the whole thing. I should have should have brought it. But it basically, in his quote, he said he was a preacher of the gospel. The first sentence was, I was a preacher of the gospel before I became a civil rights leader. I will be a preacher of the gospel while I'm a civil rights leader, and I will continue to be a preacher of the gospel all the days of my life. I just thought that was so profound because he he is he made that announcement himself to say, let me just let everybody know what my number one thing is, and it's the gospel of Jesus. I was really moved just to yep. just to read it, and I think he saw. The statement I made, which is numerous texts, Galatians three twenty seven, First Corinthians twelve, that that's what brings people together. Yep. You think about what Jesus does in answering our sin problems and our physical death problem, and takes out the classes of people, the color of people, and the sex of people. That's what it does. Yep. And I and I always hate it because somebody invariably probably from our audience. We'll send us an email this week and say, yeah, but MLK, and then you list all the weaknesses he had or rumors about him or whatever. But you remember, he he's a man like any man, but he was fighting for a just cause. I mean, what, what well, has there's happened? there's idiots er- everywhere. Well, you know, I just you know, hate it because you them. always hear that. But look, that's the same thing they did to Dad. I mean, I think the whole controversy Dad had a few years ago, the worst thing that happened out of all that in Dad's mind wasn't the biblical stuff or sexuality or any of that. It was they called him a racist. Oh yeah, and we but, knew that was so untrue. It was so unfair. Right. But that's what they do. I've, I've told people I was like, <laughs> you have now accused the most non-racist person I know, which is my dad, of being a racist. But that's just the world we live in. When right. people pick a side and they attack you, they're going to use the same. You know, they're like, oh, you live in Louisiana, you're white. Oh, you must be a racist. Yeah, you grew up in the forties. We racist. work with our, we work with our local uh, police department, and. Uh, some of the SWAT team members, I've converted them to Christ, and uh, one of them was there yesterday. Uh, it's security, and he was telling me. He said, "He said, let me get this straight and make sure I have this straight." He said, "Y'all, y'all converted Thomas. His first name was Thomas. I don't know what his last name is, but they said y'all converted that guy Thomas." I said, "Yeah." He said, "I told my fellow SWAT team members, guess who was converted and gave his life to Jesus Christ?" And they said, "Who?" And he said, when I told them his name, they said, you are kidding. They said, no, he's a child of God over there now. They said, that guy we keep arresting for, you know, you know, crystal meth and I don't know what all cocaine, you know, just on the street out there, you know, all kinds of mischief. They said, they converted him? And they said, man, what'd they tell him? <laughs> they were trying to figure out how you could convert someone that they thought was, look, unconvertible un, unworthy and down he they were stunned well and i have to say dad that's what i love about <clears throat> what you and mom were doing and the plant we have there is look it's it's just like jesus's word it's dirty it's smelly it's yeah. people with a lot of problems yep. it's it's some it's but some people why, with a lot of mental I mean, problems the whole point of what we're talking about here's john the baptist and jesus makes that profound statement and then you know he goes on to say after he said he's the greatest man born of a woman but he who's the least in the kingdom is greater than him i mean jesus is su- su- uh, supplying the power to transform us all that's i mean right. it's his spirit at work that's right. why it said john the bad you know why he's the greatest human because he had the holy spirit from birth yep you know we get it once we you know Become respond to jesus right. yeah but but then that here we go he's supplying the power we're just along for the ride from cover to cover, and I went back and I went through verse after verse after verse after verse on our attitude toward the poor, Al, and it was a long study. If everyone would just take the word poor, P-O-O-R, and so so, so what's God's, what's, his, what's the M-O on poor, reaching out to the poor? 
I was astounded at how many verses, and the principle is all the way from Leviticus, the law of Moses, all the way through Jesus, all the way through. Whatever you do, reach out and help the poor. They're always going to be there, right. but you reach out and you help them. If you rely on government programs and all this, nope. The sons and daughters of God and, and the church should be way more involved in helping the poor than they currently are. The Catholics are doing a great job with it in a lot of ways, and there's others, Salvation Army and all these different groups. But everyone who claims Jesus, Christianity at large, Agreed. should spend way more time reaching out to the poor. We don't do Let that Let me tie enough. that in with our study, because we started off talking about Matthew 11. But when John was in prison in Matthew 11... In verse 4, Jesus told him, said, go back and tell, report to John what you hear and see. And this is the statement he made in verse 5 of chapter 11 in Matthew. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Precisely. And then he made the comment about John the Baptist being the greatest, and then he makes that, that comment that we're, we've been talking about all morning. But then he made another comment that I wanted to bring up, and he says, what can I compare this generation to? And then he says, for John came neither eating nor drinking, you know, because we read where he didn't drink any kind of alcohol or whatever at any time. And he says, and the people say he has a demon. In the same way that you were accused of being a racist. Yep. There, there's, you know, when people attack you, that's what they do. They did the same thing to John the Baptist. Yep. He brought up the fact that, you know, he didn't care how royal the family was. He said, y'all are living in sin. And, I mean, it cost him his, his life. Yep. But they're like, well, you have a demon. You're demon-possessed, you wild camel hair wearing. <laughs> that's right. Because locust they thought, eating. yeah, locust eating Who are you to tell me? Yeah, look at you. (laughs) Put yourself together, man. (laughs) And then, but Jesus made this statement, which I thought is really interesting, and it's really controversial in the religious world. I don't find it controversial at all. Jesus said it, but he said, you know, John, they say, has a demon. He says, the son of man, referring to himself, came eating and drinking, and they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her actions. Because it gives you the impression that Jesus, you know, he went to the parties. It says he came eating and drinking. It's not wrong, based on what I read, to drink alcohol. It's wrong to get drunk, obviously. He makes that distinction. Or be controlled by it. Yeah, he makes that (laughs) distinction. But people, that makes people uncomfortable. But I didn't I didn't say it. Jesus is the one that said it. The big picture is it's not, in my opinion, it's the government is terrible at helping the poor. It's because not, their goals are different. They're saying we want to end poverty. It's not the that government's never, job. Never. I'm like mm-hmm. Ronald Reagan on this one. It's not the government's job to help the poor. It's really not. The bottom line is the government is the problem. It's our job to reach out to the poor. The difference is I'm over there and we're helping them all the time and many are being converted and they're, they're turning to Jesus. You say... And you've proven one thing. You, you if say, you feed much, them, they will come. Yeah. <laughs> and you right. say, well, how much money is changing that? I'm not getting paid anything. Right. I we're, volunteer we're to do it. We're putting money in. We need to all as Christians volunteer to reach out to our fellow man, whether they're poor or rich. We just reach out to them and we help them, and we love them. You say it would work far better that and, way than getting some government program coming in. They've spent trillions, and, and, so and what there's is, more poor now than I like what so you do, your, Phil. That's right. Yep. What's your goal? Your goal is for them to go to heaven. Yes. Right. You can You can live this life with nothing and go I to heaven. I sincerely love them. That's but right. you're luring them in with the meal, and and then you're, you're sharing Jesus. But Jesus did the same thing. Sure. He lured them in with the meal. Fish. You remember John 6? We're getting there. Now, it took he, about a he, year for... For them to say, what is I, could, I could see in their mind, but they finally, Miss K would walk up with like food carts and say, okay, y'all get in a line now, because I'm fixed to get you some food carts going. What's, what's not funny, but I was going to say what's funny is when we all got together, you know, on the last Sunday of the year, a couple of weeks ago, and we had the bus over there going to bring them over because they're all home. They're all homeless, they don't but they cars. wouldn't get on the bus because they thought it was some kind of government trap. <laughs> yeah, 
to put they taking them. us back to jail. Last yeah. time I ever got on, got on the bus, they were going to the correctional they would not, center. They would not get on it. They wouldn't. I learned a valuable lesson. Once the people who have never been loved, once they experience that, and it becomes in their mind, they say, wait a minute. He, he's giving us, he's, he's helped. We're not having to give them anything. Right. They're reaching out to us. Once they figured out that we love them sincerely, you wouldn't believe the change in, in, in a human being when they right. know someone loves them. Right. A lot of them had never been loved. They just just down and well, out, down and out, circumstances, <laughs> it happens. And like you said, you, now you got a current crop of people, most of them are on the left in our country, that are basically saying we want to take everybody that's done well, that's built a business, that's – is wealthy, whatever. We're going to take all that money and we're going to redistribute it. We're going to fix this. And so they they come in and do these things about trying to make everybody even, Stephen. Futility. But just futility. So Where's John the, the Baptist do you had the same thing when you challenge the people in control. Remember they asked him remember about the taxes and how yeah. he started dictating policy. He gave right. an opinion a lot like Phil does. And that's eventually <laughs> probably why he was in jail. And then he had made so many people with power bitter that it eventually cost him we his, sprang his one from uh jail here three or four months ago and he was saying he told me his case he said whoo he showed up next sunday he was there with us you know and I said, you didn't break I him said, out of jail did you you said no we, we we had to pay oh, okay, we, okay we paid the i just money. want to clarify because you said Ms. we Casey, sprung my, him I didn't how know. much is it to get him out <laughs> when we found out it we didn't know he was in jail when we found out he was in jail you know Miss K got on, got on with a DA and uh, why much I owe you. So she pays and springs him. And the then the brother that we sprang from the jail, he came in there saying, oh, I thought y'all forgot me. He said, <laughs> about three weeks in the slammer. And he said, I thought y'all forgot me. I said, no, we didn't forget you. We just couldn't track you down, man. Uh, you never Pretty know. Pretty cool story. <laughs> what work you're going He's still there, by the way. <laughs> Not in jail. He's still with the brothers there, you know. So, hey, so I, my, I have an opinion, and this is so it's not. This is not Bible. This is Al's opinion. You don't find a second opinions in the Bible, but this idea about the spirit of Elijah, it seems to be that God brings it out generationally. You'll see it throughout the Old Testament, especially when you had a lot of prophecy. But then you saw it definitely here, as you said. Malachi points. You go to John 1, he said, I'm not Elijah, but certainly that spirit that Malachi well, talked about was there. A lot of people say, well, he was Elijah reincarnated. Right. Or, but he, he Elijah never died. That's right. Which is so, why a lot of people thought it might have been him. He just showed up as John. Well, but that I think is he him. just met in the same type of right. spirit. Well, so, that's my, so here's my opinion. My opinion is that from time to time, that that spirit of Elijah, that person that sees everything in black and white and has a prophetic voice will come along throughout history. And I think it still happens today. I think that's what dad has. I think he, he has a spirit of Elijah. I don't think there's any, because, I mean, look, I could be totally wrong. I mean, it may be nothing. Not it may just be Phil being I Phil. mean, to me, I'm comparing it like I'm going to the verse that said, I think we're all in the spirit of Elijah once you get the Holy but, Spirit of God. Who in, Jays, who in yep. America? We're just I mean, gonna that's say that's just what I'm saying. Who, the who, verse says, he who's in the least of the kingdom. But I'm is saying, I'm saying, him. who in America, if you put a picture of their face on TV or anywhere else, would say, now oh, that guy there, and then they talk about it. I'm saying that think, is unique in that yeah, because I think he's seen well, as that. Well, it's because Phil And he does, doesn't see himself as anything great. Don't begin well, in the shoes with question. Elijah. He was far greater man than I ever will be, but I'm just saying. Well, look, well, that's what the I'm least saying, in the kingdom I'm will be greater than him. Phil is not politically correct because he lives on the river. If you take some an individual like John the Baptist, Jesus, yeah, and you just put him in an isolated wilderness for about 30, 40 years. He comes out looking like <laughs> Phil and talking like John the Baptist because they're – I'm saying where is there another one? Because I'm looking – I'm not yeah. finding him. I'm bad culture. for barbershops. <laughs> yeah, bad there's, no, for there's, barbershops. No, there's no filter. <laughs> well, because so. it's you see it the way – Didn't you have a book called Unfiltered? It was a very accurate description <laughs> of, of – P-H-I-L, Unfiltered. I think but if y'all think look, about it, look, if there's no grace, uh, Jesus came, John 1, that we covered this – Jesus came full of grace and truth. I was fixed to say the same verse. Now look. There's a balance. It, 
there'd been a dry spell yeah. from 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 Genesis all the way to this time frame. Right. A dry spell, a long drought, where there was no grace. The grace of God. It, I mean, look, you can be forgiven. You don't have to be perfect, like keep every command that God has given. There was never any sacrifice for him. And all of a sudden, here comes the ultimate sacrifice, God himself in a human body, Jesus. And he delivers mankind from their sins, never to up there at the right hand of God, constantly mediating for them to keep them cleansed. They're full of God's spirit. And you say, that was a long time in coming. Well, you just think about being inserted into that. Well, you would have to be a John the Baptist type to get their attention. Sin, they're so steeped in sin, Al, the whole so human race. The pastor yesterday that spoke, Mike, because neither one of y'all were there, he, that's the verse he talked about. And he was like, in his opinion, he said the church, you know, 40 years ago, they would holler truth and whisper grace. And he said, now, 40 years later, of course, this was his opinion. He said, I feel like they, in our politically correct world, they holler grace and whisper truth, hmm. which I thought was a pretty good point. Pretty good and, point. and I've always viewed Phil to answer your question about in that spirit, because John the Baptist seemed to holler truth and whisper grace. Of course, he didn't. Jesus had died grace, and right, buried. Right. Yeah, he wasn't under that system. And so in that light, I will agree with you. I think for the most of us, we should try to have a balance there because we all are under grace. Yep. But I do think Jesus's point was that it's not he. You know, when he said, "I am the truth," right. he still keeps the the personal being of what we have in him. If you look at how Jesus handled situations, well, we just read in Matthew eleven a lot of things he did was very unorthodox, which would make religious people uncomfortable. I mean, when's the last time you went to a bar to you know share Jesus? But he was going to party type atmospheres and was sharing the good news of his father in those scenarios or, or that text wouldn't have been in there right. in matthew 11 not only that the same apostle that we're reading from john the book of john he went on to say in first john 3 verse 10 it's real simple watch and i tend to i tend to uh what would i say hammer this this is how we know who the children of god are and who the children of the devil are. You're like two groups of people on planet Earth, the children of God and the children of the devil. So when we say, look, uh, Jesus is Lord, you have to prove that on their baptism day. We say, you have to prove that. You, you, Paul said, I preached everywhere they should repent and prove their repentance by their deeds. You say, it has to be a change of life here. Repentance means you prove it. Anyone, here's how you can tell who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone, this is complex, anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, neither is anyone who does not love his brother. You say, so you mean you've got this thing down to when a person says Jesus is Lord. From that point on, everywhere he is, he makes sure, he makes every effort to do what is right, and love his brother. How hard could it be for someone to say, good night, I can do that. I can attempt to do that. And when you fail at it, he's there to well, not, you have count, not, grace. Count, not count. You have grace. Grace Not, not and counting truth. that against you. That's right. Well, if you look at it, Al, it's the greatest deal mankind has ever gotten. But it and, goes back to what Jesus said. Wisdom is proved right by her actions. Yeah. So we're out of time. <laughs> Woo, Man, that was we never great. even that, got to where we well, were going no, to No, about. I was going to say, so here's my tease for the next podcast, because we, we're in John, so that's the beautiful thing about it. But we haven't even talked about the most important thing John the Baptist did and why he really was here to begin with. So we're going to do that next time. So there's your tease. We hope you're reading the book of John. I got to at least say something, Jay, before we sign off, because last time we made a prediction about the national championship game that now has come and gone. So you want to gloat a bit? I want to gloat a bit. I, I've got my. Uh, you see my hat here, so you see what that. Oh, is that the even Jesus came riding on a burrow? No. Oh. Oh, but that's pretty good. I hadn't thought about that. Thank you. <laughs> and be. our president was there, and the stadium. They were chanting, 
USA. <laughs> That's how USA. I heard that. Trump was yeah. he he was quite popular at the national. I think he became an LSU fan over there. I think he did. It's kind of weird. He, he said he said Coach Ogeron. He was like I thought he had laryngitis when I first met him. He said but you know, he's some no. guy. So this is the goat burrow greatest of all time. Oh, I thought it was a burrow. That's a goat. So. You know, but most time you think about a goat in sports as being a negative. Yep. Burrow, greatest of all time. Now we can say it. He won the last championship. Heisman, blah 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 blah. So I just wanted to say, congratulations. We add that in. Jason and I were right. We Lit. said double digits. Mm-hmm. We were both right. Dad said Clemson would be hard to beat. He was right. But I didn't did. say not, LSU was not going to win. No, not, not really. Be. I said uh, <laughs> we could have hung about two more touchdowns on there if we wanted well, to. Certainly yeah, but there was but LSU's enough. behind 16 to nothing or something yeah, going 17, in. 17 you know, to 17. It was never 16 to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, uh, Clemson got out there ahead of them. They were ahead by 10. You said 16 to nothing. <laughs> ahead <laughs> by 10? Ahead by yeah, 10. 17-7. 17 7. 7. 17-7. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, anyway, we got to go. So Here, I'll sign it off with this. Louisiana is feeling good (laughs) we are so glad you're watching and listening to the unashamed podcast be sure to like us on facebook subscribe on youtube and itunes that's going to keep you up to date with all the new episodes and it's also going to let other people find out about our podcast so keep spreading the word and watching and listening to unashamed with phil robertson